Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. Today, we're talking Kyle Pitts out of Florida. I know you guys want to hear about Kyle. Guy is in just a polarizing talent, especially the tight end position. He can cross train at wide receiver and tight end. Um, if the Giants did select him 11th overall, he's a player that can do so many different things. He can line up as an X receiver on the outside and dominate against corners. He will pull, like just torture linebackers. Safeties can't guard him. He's six foot six. The guy's a, a just a mammoth of a tight end. So what we want to talk about here is, is really his receiving abilities. We're going to also throw in some blocking clips uh, that I included, but for the most part, you're going to see the receiving abilities are generational. He does not drop the ball. He makes contested catches. He makes uh, 50, 50 catches. He is a great route runner, but he is not a great blocker. And a lot of people, that is the con. That is the similarity between him and Evan Ingram, you know, Evan Ingram coming out of Ole Miss. Uh, he kind of struggled in the blocking category, but we knew he was a very, very talented pass catcher. Kyle Pitts is similar, but he's so much more than Evan Ingram. And we're going to, we're going to break down a little bit why, but before we dive into all the nitty gritties, Anthony, my friend, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I'm a little sleepy today. I think both of us, both of us are, but you know what? I'm ready to wake up, talk about some football, look at a nice Florida talent. I live in Florida. I have a lot of friends who are UF fans. So, you know, they've told me, dude, talk about Kyle Pitts on your podcast. I'm like, dude, I'm going to do it. Now I'm doing it. Talking about Kyle Pitts on the podcast. Let's do it. And before, <laughs> before we hear this in the comment section, let's get this out of the way. Ready? Yeah, we have a tight end. And yes, that tight end is very athletic. And we heard a lot about him being able to make plays as a receiver. Our tight end dropped 11 passes a season. Kyle Pitts dropped zero passes a season. That's kind of the difference. This guy is legit and he makes these plays and he's a great receiver and he doesn't drop the ball. Evan Engram has moments where he looks legit, but for the most part, can't get out of his own way. So it is worth looking at a potential option if we do decide to replace Evan Engram and not even about replacing him. Maybe you can just add Kyle Pitts in line with him and run more 12 personnel. It's not... None of this is a diss to Evan Engram. You can make it a diss to Evan Engram if you want in the comment section. Feel free. Have your opinions. But we're just going to look at Kyle Pitts objectively as a player and a prospect. And we're going to give you our thoughts on him and see what's up. Exactly. You know, let's nip that in the bud now. Kyle Pitts is a vastly different prospect than Evan Ingram simply because he can line up as an X receiver. He can line up at the slot in line. Um, he can do so many things. And you can make the argument that Evan Ingram can do that well as uh, too. But the reality is Evan Ingram is not a great route runner. You know, we see this over and over again. Um, he is able to create separation because of his athleticism. You know, he's a very fast and very agile tight end, but he's not the best route runner. Anthony points it out, you know, when he doesn't come back to the football um, and help his quarterback out. And he also is the weirdest pass catcher ever. He like jumps before he catches. He does very strange things. He doesn't strap his gloves. He does very weird things that, that hurt his ability to catch the football and the fundamentals just seem to be forgotten. But I will say this. There's a few scenarios that could un unfold if the Giants did go Kyle Pitts at 11. And one of them is you draft Kyle Pitts and you say, okay, Evan Ingram, Pro Bowl tight end. I know a lot of people are like, he barely won a Pro Bowl, if even deserved to win a Pro Bowl. I don't think he deserved it considering all the drops and the mistakes he made, but, you know, who am I? So the reality is you could look to Evan Ingram and say, okay, let's trade him for a third-round pick. Let's see, you know, highest bidder. Let's see what we get for him. Um, then you you also get rid of the six million dollar cap hit. You could roll that into a pass rusher. You could roll that into a, a wide receiver. Um, there's a number of things you can do with that money. But then you have Kyle Pitts. You have a little bit extra cash, and then you get rid of Evan Ingram, who play, who you know plagues your team with mistakes and drops and interceptions. So there's that one scenario. The other scenario is you bring in Kyle Pitts to add to Evan Ingram. You know, and when you do that. You, now you have a lot of 12 personnel sets. You know, we saw 12 personnel. Jason Garrett tried to do it with Engram, uh, Caden Smith, and Livian Toilolo. But when you have two dynamic playmakers in EE and Kyle Pitts, it's pretty awesome. You know, it's a pretty exciting thing to do uh, and, and see in a 12 personnel with two quality players like that, uh, minus the drops of Evan Ingram. But for the most part, I'm kind of intrigued by that scenario. And I think it's something the Giants might consider doing. I think taking a lot of pressure off Evan Ingram would be beneficial for him because as we pointed out in our Evan Ingram breakdown, we, we went through every single mistake of his. A lot of his mistakes are mental. He looks down on himself. When he's in the game, he makes mistakes. His head is hanging. When he's on the bench, his head is hanging. He looks upset, disappointed, sad. And you know as an athlete, if you've ever played uh, recreational any any athletics, when you make a mistake, it hurts your confidence. And when you consistently make mistakes, it kills your confidence. I think Evan Ingram is a product of his own mental uh, state. And I think taking some pressure off of him, uh, drafting Kyle Pitts, creating competition might actually bring the most out of a player like that. What do you think? 
you know, it's the best way to prevent that from happening for Evan Engram is to stop making mistakes. And then his confidence would be fine. <laughs> no way. Want to guess that. <laughs> it's true. He does get in his own way and he does hurt his own confidence. But you know what? There is something to be said about players who make mistakes and then brush it off and move on to the next play. You know, like that's – it's a professional sport. Yeah, you know, you make a mistake – Shrug your shoulders and move on. We've seen – I mean, how many times have we seen Eli Manning throw probably the ugliest interception we thought we'd ever see him throw, then go out there, pretend it never happened, throw one uglier, then go out there, pretend it never happened, throw a game-winning touchdown, right? He's cold-blooded. We need more players like that. We don't – you know, uh, Evan Engram, you know, this isn't – like I said, this isn't a this video on Evan Engram, but, you know, there are players who – aren't able to get out of their own way. And because of that, you know, Will Hernandez is another good case. The guy wasn't performing up to par. And now we're hearing discussions that he might not be with the Giants next season. The same discussion probably should be had about a few other players. And maybe Evan Engram is one of them. Maybe he just isn't a tight end one. Maybe he needs a different role. Maybe he needs a change of scenery, whatever. You know, like I said, I, I actually really like Evan Engram. I'm probably higher on him than most Giants fans are. I think he's very talented, very athletic. But Let's take a look at this option, see what he could bring to the Giants potentially, or maybe even to some other team. If you're watching this and you want to see a Kyle Pitts film breakdown, let's see what he brings to the table for an NFL team. Absolutely. So let's jump right into it. So here we are, guys. The first play for Kyle Pitts, as you can see, he's lined up in the slot right now, really a Z spot. Just look, you're already right off the bat, you're seeing the diversity that he brings to the offense. You know, he's not playing in line. We see Evan Ingram do this as well, but you're going to watch a player, and the first play here is a freaking just monster play. He leaps over two defenders. There's another one closing in. It's almost triple coverage. And you see the red zone threat. All Daniel Jones would have to do here is literally throw the ball up and let his six foot six tight end who doesn't drop the football go up and get it. And he is the perfect guy. Um, you'll see just this route is beautiful. This little corner out, bam. And it's just gorgeous, man. You, you can't get better than that. Yeah, I'll say I'm the one who threw this clip in here. Might surprise some of our viewers who listen to us carefully. I hate, you know, putting a lot of stock into guys who can who strictly just make 50-50 balls, right? I care more about separating and route running. Well, on this play, I figured I'll just throw this in there anyway because, yeah, while the most important thing isn't making 50-50 balls – Sometimes it's important in a situation like this where the ball is perfect, single coverage, and the guy can just go up there and make a catch. You want to see him do it. And I don't know what it is, but the way that he goes up there and just like elevates another couple of inches at the end of this, just like it, it mesmerizes me watching this play by Kyle Pitts. He just like hangs in the air for a second and twists his body. Like the body control is what's insane because that's not just about 50 50 balls, that's about all passes. If you have good body control, you're going to catch more passes. You're not going to drop as many, right? The body control in this play is kind of nuts. You can see him over there at the bottom right of the screen. He gets, you know, into some tight coverage with the corner, a little hand fighting. Corner misreads it, you know, doesn't make a good play on the ball. The ball is really thrown perfectly high and away from the corner to where only Kyle Pitts can get it. And he just soars in the air, makes a twisting 360 catch, and it's kind of sick. So I felt like this clip kind of had to be in here because – you know, like I said, 50-50 balls aren't everything. They're not even half of everything. To me, they're like a third of everything. But you know what? A play like this is pretty special. It's very athletic. And, you know, this is elite playmaking. When, when the Giants say they want to get playmakers, a guy who makes a play like that is absolutely a playmaker. You know, it's not that this is mm -hmm. all he can do, but it's the fact that he can do things like this. But it's not all that he right. can do, and you'll see that later on. Yeah, and I, I want to give some details too. Like – when you have a player who can do something like this, all it takes is your quarterback to throw it up in the right place. You know, just throw up the ball and let your guy go get it. This is one of those 50-50 jump balls. But as you mentioned before, you actually like receivers who aren't just 50-50 uh, jumpers. They also can run routes and separate. He can do all of that, you know. So this is just an added benefit to Kyle Pitts and what he brings to the table. But at the point of attack, you know, this is this is what you want to see from guys like this. Six foot six, he attacks the ball at its highest point, right? That's every receiver – will do this. You know, if you're a great receiver, if you're good at catching 50, 50 balls, you attack at its highest point, he elevates and he catches this. But at the same time, I also love how he twists his bodies away from the defenders as he catches this to protect the football, you know, because as a cornerback and defensive back, your job, if a guy catches the ball is to get your hand in there as soon as possible to try and dislodge that pass. He does a really, really good job of securing the football after the catch 
to make sure that uh, defensive backs can't get their hand in there um, and try and dislodge it. So he turns that ball and he protects it and he gets to the ground as fast as possible to control that ball and make sure that the play see his hand. The defensive back is trying to get his hand in there uh, right at the end there, but he just gets to the ground so quickly and finishes off that play, protects the football. Um, and he makes sure he's in it. He's in bounds. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful play. And that's, that's just step one of why, you know, Kyle Pitts is such a talented prospect coming out of Florida. Yeah. I mean, what more can we say? It was an incredible catch. Um, and now we'll see this next play. I haven't seen this one yet, Alex. So I guess I'll have to let you break it down. Or, or oh, now I'm seeing it now. I think I can, I can see what happens. It's really I mean, close. This, is this actually is out of bounds. Catch. This is actually okay. out of bounds. But um, you'll see, it's just a really nice way. Like, I, what, okay, so what I really like about this clip specifically is watch how he how he gets through initial contact. You know, he lays his hands on on the first place. He he pushes through uh, the press coverage. And he's just so strong and physical and athletic. He pushes past it, and then he manages to gain separation in the, in the corner of the end zone. Um, it just he just gets it's probably about an inch. You'll see his foot is out by about an inch. But look, just watch how in the beginning here how he fights. Sorry, how he fights through this initial block. Those two guys right there. He's right here. He's he's hands to the face right now. He but got he jammed up pretty good there. He, he did. did. But look at this. He, 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 he got jammed up pretty good. But yes, he does. He fights through it, and he does. You know, get back on the original line. Remember, mm -hmm. we talked about this with the Devonte Smith review. We were talking mm -hmm. about um, stacking. You know, and stacking right. the cornerback. Once you get by them, get back on the original line. It looks like he does a pretty good job getting back to the original line here before separating at the top of the route and creating you know a fair amount of separation in the end zone. Um, it's a pretty good throw too, though. But you know, like look at you the said, separation. Just, yeah. Right. Away. Yeah, he did separate pretty well at the end of it after the um, – I think that's a linebacker played pretty good coverage. you got to give credit. You know, that's another thing. NC State, they produce some pretty good pros, so you got to keep that. He doesn't drop the ball, though. He does not drop the ball. The man's got hands like me, hands like glue, you know. Yeah, well, I'll have to do a highlight video, a film breakdown of you. Hey, man, we should. You don't know. I'm, I'm nasty with it. Yeah. Yeah, the Pee Wee football leagues will be all over your film. <laughs> okay. So right, I just wanted to show that clip before. Right. I wanted yeah, to show yeah. that clip before because that's of the red clip. zone aspect. Yeah, I'll say though, that's a good clip because you know the first one we shot we saw him go up, leap up, make an athletic play in a 50-50 ball. That one we saw more of him fight through some contact and separate at the top of a route. So that was a little more route running based. But I will say that wasn't really my favorite rep. I, I think that off the line of scrimmage, there's probably more that he could do to not get jammed up so much. Um, although there's two he guys, though, you gotta keep in mind. He does do a good job guys. fighting through that that jam, and he, he does eventually separate. But you know, we'll, we'll see. He's jam. He's at uh, in press coverage here, playing the outside X receiver. So let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and he, again, you're seeing he's playing X receiver. He's on the outside again, showing his versatility, his diversity, what he's capable of doing. And you're going to see just a beautiful back shoulder throw here. And he boxes out the wide receiver really well. He protects the football and he gets a nice chunk of yardage. It's just what he does here is just really nice. It's another he, he has, he, Yep. And he's really good at fighting with his hands. That's one thing I've noticed uh, routinely after watching his film. He, he really is good at creating leverage and space with his hands. Um, and you can see he turns his head around to make sure that he knows where the ball is coming and the corner sees it, but watch his hands. He completely shifts. You know, there, this is hand fighting. This is this is 50-50 right now. You can do whatever you want except for extend your arm, right? If you extend your arm, that's when they're going to call you for that offensive pass interference. But for the most part, right here, he has the ability to use his strength. And you can see he just moves the corner right behind him, and he just opens his body up. And look at that. He has complete leverage on this. And this is what we're saying about a tight end against a cornerback. This is what you want. Give your guy a chance, and bam, you have a 50-50 ball here that you have leverage on because you have a bigger body. You've boxed him out and you use your strength at the point of attack to create separation. That's the thing, creating separation with your hands. Absolutely. Um, we'll see it from this camera angle as well. I think it's, you know, a really tight window throw. Um, credit to Trask here, really good throw on the sideline. You know, the coverage is pretty good. I do like the release though. Um, there's no jam, and I think that's partially because there is a pretty solid release here at the start of the play. Um, it reminds me of uh, Devontae Adams a little bit, actually. The way he does a little stutter step. <laughs> Taking it too far. Just the release. Come on. Just the, just, Come on. I'm, I'm just talking about the release. God. 
All right, let's let's just let the clip roll. I wanna I wanna talk about another 50-50 ball. You know, that's not my favorite thing to break down, but the 50-50 here. I do like the hand fighting, and this ball is thrown in a spot where it's away from the defender again. It's another good throw, and he does a good job. One thing that I'll say, though, I think he's a little too close to the sideline. I think he does get squeezed into the sideline, and he shouldn't be that close to the sideline. Um, I know I it's a, I know to back shoulder, shoulder fade. I know it's a back shoulder fade, but he's a little too close to the sideline. You shouldn't ever get that close to the sideline because you risk you run the risk of actually running out of bounds. And when he stops here, he has to be really, really careful you see him drag that foot. He's very close. to He should not be that close to the sideline, even if it's a back shoulder fit. He's just way too close. Like, there's certain situations where you get pushed that close to the sideline, you still make the play. You shouldn't be that close to the sideline. The cornerback does a good job here. So, in terms of being an X receiver, yeah, I've seen plays where he he has the ability to do it. But plays like this might tell me, okay, he's got the receiving aspect of it. Yeah. Who, you know, he shouldn't be pushed that close to the sideline, dude. You, you just, I have an objection. Yeah, any receiver – any receiver should not be that close to the sideline, no matter what route they're running. Yes, but in the NFL, he won't be because the hashes in the college field are a lot more spread apart. So you can see he doesn't have much room to work with in the first place. On an NFL that's field, a, he would okay, have way a, more space. I'll say that is a good counterpoint, but also I feel like he's not lined up that that close to the sideline. I just think the tackle box is pushed closer to him, if you get what I'm saying. Plus, um, if that's really – so, so you say you want to take that argument, right? This is a much shorter throw for Trask than it would be in the NFL because he is so close to the sideline. Right. Trask is, right? right? He would be in the middle of the field instead. So maybe he, he made this extra hard for Trask for no reason by getting even closer to the sideline, making this an even further throw. You get what I'm saying? But I think he's trying to sell the go. You know, I think he's trying to sell that go because usually, like we saw Darius Slayton do it all the time. Like he tries to squeeze that sideline and get and stack on the and like get over him. But I think he wanted the cornerback to get open. Right, right. Well, right. Yeah, he but I think, that, I think that Kyle Pitts wants him to get wants the cornerback to stack in front of him over top, and then that way he has that leverage. He can use his arms and just really push him behind, and that way he can he can box him out. I think he wanted him to to think he's going he's going deep. That way he can just like. Instead of he's like the reverse stacking, you know, instead of going over the cornerback to create that leverage, he goes underneath and then opens up his body. And now he has a good frame. But I will say he is very, very close to the sideline here. So you do have a you do have a solid argument. Yeah, when it comes I to mean, it. it could easily be out of bounds. And and I think your counterpoint has some that your counterpoints ha are some some of them are valid. I just yeah, I think we can both agree. Like, look at if you look at this shot, he it literally looks like he's out of bounds, you know. So yeah, I just think he's a little too close, but. That's all. <laughs> if only if only every debate on Twitter went like that, it would be a much right? better world, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh okay. yeah. Not but he did get this. This, this was a catch though. So about everything. Twitter. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, see, so yeah, I don't know. know. It's it's a great catch. We can all agree on that. I just, you know, he's very close a to little nitpicky. Ones. I, I, um, yeah, but you got to nitpick yeah. when you're doing a film breakdown. We only have no, you, you do, know, we you have do, a limited amount do. of plays. We got to try and round all the bases. So there's one That's thing: true. potential That's flag that you can read. Right. Yellow flag, call it. Don't call it red. Just call it yellow. Okay, okay. That's that's valid. Um, okay, so here you see him. We finally get to see Kyle Pitts in the inline position at tight end. Usually, we've been seeing him, you know, in the slot or X position, but now he's in line. So now we're going to see what his release is off the line of scrimmage and really what, how dangerous he is as a pass catcher from this position here. So another deep ball. Think, uh, imagine this. This is a gorgeous throw, which is absolutely perfect. But it's important to know that Kyle Pitts averaged 17.9 yards per reception in college this past year. So he has a deep, not he's a deep target. The point here is that he is capable of being a deep, a deep threat. Um, he does push the field and he has the speed. You know, because a lot of tight ends might not have the speed to get um, downfield quickly when you have uh, just such elite pass rushers in the NFL. Having that athleticism and speed allows you to continue to be a deep threat, even if that 17.9 uh, yards per reception goes down to 14. You know, it's still giving him that ability. Fair enough. All right. Um, inline tight end. I like the release here. Um, I, I'm not going to harp on – yeah, you know what? I think this is a really good throw and a nice – Great, nice great concentration. Though. Yeah, he locates the ball really well to look it in over his shoulder. This is um, 
not to diss anybody, but week seven versus Philadelphia on the road. I think Giants fans remember. This could be a difficult catch for tight ends locating the ball over the shoulder. He does it and he does it really well. So, you know, ball yep. locating these, these receiving skills, the hand-eye coordination, it's clearly all there for Kyle Pitts. He makes some yep. pretty incredible grabs, and I think that's what we can take away from these first few clips. Yep, and, and right at this position, I do want to point out two different things. The first thing is that he waits very wrong. The cornerback is looking at his hands to see if they go up. He waits until the last possible second to put his hands up, so the cornerback really doesn't have much reaction time to try and swipe this ball away. By the time he, he has his hand, he, he already has a separation, and he really – allows that ball to drop into his far shoulder so the guy can't get to it. It might just be coincidence, but I do really like just the technique and the ability to not put your hands up to the last second because you're so confident in your abilities. So the cornerback has no idea when this ball is really landing. Um, I do like that. That is something that they do practice. Um, and, I, and I like uh, what Kyle Piss does here just to make sure that he gives himself the best opportunity and every advantage to catch this football, unlike Evan Ingram. I think that's a good point. Okay. You gotta so throw a like Evan Ingram in there, dude. <laughs> Leave, <laughs> him out of this. Leave him out of this. <laughs> we can't. We're we're literally breaking down the tight end. We have to be comparing him to Evan Ingram. Um, that is like the guess, reason. If, if only Evan only because the thing, flag is hanging in the back, but you know, like this, this one, not that one. Yes, yes. But if Evan Ingram caught all those balls and he didn't and he didn't drop any, those interceptions didn't happen. We would not be talking about Kyle Pitts right now. So that I guess is, that's yeah, true. I guess that's true. But, it, hey, man, if that's true, if we wouldn't be talking about Kyle Pitts without Evan Engram having a disappointing season, should we be talking about Kyle Pitts in the first place? That's a good question. Ponder that. Say that again? If we wouldn't be talking about Kyle Pitts without Evan Engram having a disappointing season, should we even be talking about Kyle Pitts? You get what I'm saying? I, I, we should be talking about Kyle – here's just my thing. Like, I'm not as high on Kyle Pitts as most Giant fans. If we're talking about Kyle yeah. Pitts, we should be talking about Kyle Pitts because Kyle Pitts is so amazing. Not because right. okay, that's fair. Is the best player available. Logic. That's the best player available logic, right? Right. So not not the. Not the I got to dive in deeper. I got to see some more of these plays, but I don't know. We got to we got to discuss it more and let's let's break down this play and see what we see. All right. So you can see him in line there at the bottom. He like you're as you're seeing a lot. I mean, this is just 50 50 ball. Throw it up, make a play, and you see this a lot with him. Um, I think that. It's not a bad thing that's going to translate to the NFL. I'm Anthony, I know you don't like the 50-50 aspect, but we do make a couple of nice catches later. Uh, but this is something that, like, if your quarterback is confident in you and they can put the ball in the right spot, and we know for a fact Daniel Jones is really good at putting the ball in the right spot in man coverage, and Jason Garrett loves to draw up these type of plays one-on-one, -on -one, Kyle Pitts is going to catch it almost every time. You know, that that's just the reality of how good of a player he is in man, in man coverage 50-50. Jason Garrett – is going to maximize a player like that because that is what he does. All he does is draw 50-50 balls to one-on-one -on -one, uh, players. I don't like that all the time. Anthony, you know, I know we would rather have better route concepts and stuff to just get guys wide open instead of throwing them up and hope for the best. Yeah. But if you're going to go that route like Jason Garrett does, Kyle Pitts is going to make plays for you. Okay, I'll say a few things. I think you're right in some aspect. This might make Kyle Pitts a scheme fit for Jason Garrett. That doesn't mean that Kyle Pitts is amazing. That just means he fits – uh, Jason Garrett's scheme, which likes to throw 50-50 right. low percentage passes. That's not necessarily a, a good thing. To, yeah, to that point, this is an incredible catch. But personally, me watching a play like this where he's just – or consecutive plays like this where he's just going up there making 50-50 passes, I don't know what I'm really drawing from watching that or able to fully break down. Like, yeah, dude, look at this play. This is an insane athletic play, and he makes an insane catch here. And the the cornerback looked looks very funny lying on his <laughs> really back good. like that. Like this because is an amazing power. It's a tight end. Well, one thing that's what we're seeing. Right. One thing that I'll say: this is a tight end on cornerback, so that's a not the most encouraging thing to me. Another thing that I'll say is, personally, this might sound surprising. I'd rather watch him make a ton of wide open catches because he's getting wide open with his route running. That's what I would rather see. Mm -hmm. So these 50-50 balls, while they are exciting plays. And while they are impressive, they don't necessarily excite me about Kyle Pitts as a prospect and about his translatable talents to the NFL right. game. That's all I got to say. True. I'm not trying to take away from him. But, you know, so, so one person has to be more excited than the other, and, you know, that's how it goes. We got to each have um, – trying to be a little more biased in our opinions. 
Right. It's totally reasonable. And look, you know, we're seeing him, the spray fade. We see Evan Ingram run this play all the time, all the freaking time. So it's nice to see, like, if you're going to scheme up this, if Jason Garrett's going to scheme this up, then you might as well get a guy who's going to catch the freaking ball. And Kyle I will say that. Catch the ball. I will say that. This is a play that we see in Jason Garrett's playbook all the time. Evan Ingram sometimes comes down with it. Sometimes he doesn't. Maybe you can say Kyle Pitts would have a better chance of coming down with it. And here's another. And this is just another. Yeah, but look at this catch, man. I look know. I get it. I get it. It's I was just hoping we'd have more chips of his route running in here. That's what I like. To there there will be. Mind. There is. There is. There is. There's more. All right. We're going to go through it. We're going to go through it. And look, I mean, he's fighting through. Look at this, man. Talk about catching. Catch he catches that with one hand and controls it. That's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. The catch is nuts. He has this is as, as good a coverage as you can get from a cornerback on his back, but because he is so strong, so athletic, and so freaking tall, he, look at the, the cornerback looks like a midget on such, his back. And he has such good, good hands and has the ability to locate the pass in the air and has great body control. That's what I like about this. Like this is not you know, yeah. he's really he fighting it. through contact here and he like he's mid air and he's able to mm-hmm. control himself and still make the catch. Yep. That's impressive. Inline exactly tight end right. again. Let's see. Let's see here. Oh, that route. Okay. You, you gotta appreciate yeah. that route, man. You gotta appreciate that route. Let me let me see the whole thing. <laughs> you rewind it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 This is a play that I, I I've been waiting for. Yes, okay. So this is a play. Wow, and he scores off of that because he's that fast. Okay, this is a play that's really impressive to me because he runs a nice route here. Oh, Let's oh, see it. Wow. Look at this. He, he waits until that cornerback turns, turns his hips. Bam. He you can tell he's looking, he's waiting for that cornerback to turn his hips. The second he does it, he's gone. He he, he hits him with the sluggo. So it, it's just really, really nice. Yeah, no, that's a that's a hell of a route. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I think that's zone coverage. So I don't necessarily think that that guy was or that I think it's a safety is going to be, you know, just um it is zone coverage. So I don't think that safety was necessarily following him and was sticking with him in the man coverage. But I think that he puts something up at the top of this route, you know, after the stem, he puts a little move here, turns that safety out of position. Trask does a great job seeing that and throwing as soon as he, um, as soon as he starts to break. And this is a good ball yeah. too. And then it's just a foot race and he wins seen. the foot race, which right. is really, you know, I, I didn't, you know, a foot race. Yeah. I mean, Listen, that that's those are the plays that I want to see. You know the route running plays, and that was really good route running. So I was impressed with that one. And there you go, a nice little yeah. slant right here, gorgeous. This is a, and this is another route running play. This is one that I threw in there because I needed to see some more route running. This is a nice slant route from a tight end. You don't see slant, you don't see tight ends oftentimes um, line up at the X receiver and run a slant route, but he did it there. And you see the uh, let me see here what he does. This is a nice roll it. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like the inside release. Set. I like the, yeah, it's like a, it's like a jab step. It's kind of like the stretch release. That's one that, um, Devonte Smith likes to use a lot. And I like that there and he separates, gets wide open, makes an easy catch. That's what I want to see, you know, especially from a tight end. Cause I've heard a lot about this guy being an incredible receiver. You know, if he's able to run routes like a receiver and then I'll, I'll, I'll agree and I'll believe it, but that's really what I want to see. He does That's something like similar me. here, a little bit more delayed. Another inside release. But he looks like – but he. But that's the thing. He has so many weapons in his toolbox and in different routes. We saw him before run that route where he squeezed the sideline on the comeback, and we saw him squeeze the sideline on the go route to the end zone, and then the spray fade later on. Now he. Now this cornerback is looking. The second – right, right there, he looks like he sells the crap out of this corner on the go. He sells the crap out of him because you see him. He jabs that foot, bam, and he wins that. Look at this. Look at the separation. You're talking about separation against a cornerback. This is this is prime. This is primo. This is primo. You know, route running from a tight end and the X spot. You can't no, get I better than this. It's tight really ends nice. usually can't run slant routes like this. This is what makes Kyle Pitts special. The other stuff, the other 50-50 balls, yeah, they make him special. But this is what it's makes him really special. Separates him from other tight ends that he can run routes like this. Yep, that's the the special. And then, you know, another little slant right behind coverage. And his frame is so big. Just look – if you just look at him compared to the cornerback here, right? So he puts that outside step. He looks like he could be going uh, just a fade to the back of the, the corner of the end zone. Instead, he fights through this press coverage, and he's just so big he runs through it easily. He doesn't even look like it affects him at all. But look at his frame. Look how big it is. The cornerback can't get around him. 
the cornerback can't physically get his arms in there, can't get around him, and he just boxes him out. And, and you can see here, he was never getting this ball. This is just another nice, a nice route. Uh, he's just so lethal, and there's so many different route concepts he can run that you can never predict what he's going to do. Because if he throws that 50-50 ball up there on a fade route, I guarantee you he's coming down with it. Instead, they run a they run a little slant, and he boxes out the receiver, the, the cornerback, and easily a touchdown. So we're seeing just a diverse array of routes he can run and how cornerbacks have no idea what's coming because when it comes to Evan Ingram, they know what's going to come with the way he lines up, whether it's going to be an outside release spray fade or it's going to be a hook. They kind of know they predicted towards the end of the season. We could see that they were running routes for Evan Ingram, but this guy, Kyle Pitts just has so much diversity to his game that it's really hard to predict what he's going to do. So, you know, with, with a play call like Jason Garrett, um, designing plays for him and different route concepts, it would be really fun to do. I just hope Jason Garrett, would actually be able to do it and have the creativity um, if they did go pits. Yeah, and speak on this play again. This is good route running. This is also a really good throw by Trask once again. He kind of leads the leads him away from the corner, kind of you know puts it out there where the corner can't get in. He makes a nice catch. But I like the release. You know, you mentioned that he really sells the fade route, which is you know what probably most corners expect to see from t- Kyle Pitts on the goal line. They probably expect the fade route. So for him to sell it and then really break open on this. Um, against nice tight press coverage, I really like to see that. This is a, a really great play, and this is one of those separating through his feet rather than his hands that I like. In line again, and you can see he just fights through coverage. You know that's what I really like about him. He just fights through coverage, and he and he uses a bit big frame. And see, so you see here, he's trying that cornerback is trying to press him. Um, I don't know if that's illegal or not. It doesn't seem like he should be able to do that, but. He basically just fights through that and he catches this ball that's high. You know, he he does a really nice job of of controlling his body and getting his hands up there. And like we said before, he has not dropped a pass this past year. So it's really impressive to see him and what he's athletically able to do and fighting through coverage to make plays. And then he fights for extra yardage too. So that's another benefit. Yeah, I mean, that was another great spectacular catch where he's reaching in air, you know, we've established he can do that stuff, but then also, you know, I, I do like the move at the top of the route and um, this isn't the best throw, but he's still able to corral it. You know, like we're seeing a lot of really special traits from Kyle Trask, or I mean, Kyle Pitts on this, uh, on this film. I knew you were going to mess up that one. I was so close to, <laughs> there's too many Kyles in this world. <laughs> too many Kyles. Oh, see, I uh, like where you just paused it and then you move. it. It's all good. Sorry. Though. Right there. Mm. Sell the fade. Yeah, you missed it, but it's okay. But yeah, no, I like I like his releases at the line of scrimmage. That's what makes him pretty special to me. I think that he runs really good routes and the releases, you know, he gets off of the line and really just creates separation. separation. Yeah, you can you see that? You see how wide open he was, and that's one on one coverage. That's not wide open from the scheme. That's just him breaking down this cornerback, turning his hips completely. I mean, if you look at this cornerback and watch how twisted he is, now he's basically facing um, the, you know, like if you see how he just gets his hip turned, just look at how wide open Kyle Pitts is here, dude. He didn't stand a chance. He didn't stand oh, a chance. Poor guy. Poor guy. Yeah, that's what I like to see, man. That's what's important to me. To see the plays like this on, you know, where he's just one on one the corner and he nice. wins with his feet. Those are more uh, impressive to me. I really love to see this. And this is what tells he's, me he's a first round talent. He's so good at selling those deep go or fade routes in the end zone, whether it's, you know, in the middle of the field or in the red zone. He's so good at selling it to the corner. He looks, you can see, he looks at the corner. He's basically looking him in the eyes. And you see the corners watching that play action for a second. And it just he just looks, look, at, right now his body shape, everything about his body says he's going corner. Everything. He's not selling it at all. And, the sec- and look how fast he is. He plants that foot. The cornerback is in the air. He lo- it looks like, he, it actually looks like he's on the ground, but right here, He's in the air. He literally, by the time that cornerback lands on the ground again, Kyle Pitts is already a yard away from him. That is how athletically gifted and, and just how stellar his route running is. Just he, He's leaving guys in midair. Leaving guys in midair. He's just levitating them like he has a force. He's just throwing them around. That should be his slogan. I leave guys in midair. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, beautiful whip route. Nice concept, though. I really like this play concept. Yeah, I do too. This is a good wrap by um UF, but or a good play call, play design by UF. Um, but that is a disgusting route, and that is what makes me high on Kyle Pitts. Plays like this. 
You know, this is Sterling a play that Shepard really right impresses me. I mean, if you see how low he gets there and how fluid or tight he's end. moving six, and six, turning five. around, he just pivots and turns around. That's really, really impressive the way that he right. was able to just <laughs> caught on the dime and flip his hips. You would never see a player like Megatron or – Want run a whip route, you know. You would never see guys that big run a whip route, but he is so athletically gifted and so in such a has a, such a good center of gravity that he's able to pull this off. He's a little slow when he gets to this point right here and turning around, but like I said before, his route concepts are so vast and so diverse. It doesn't matter, you know. They're they're thinking he's either slanting across the middle here or he's going to the corner. Instead, this is just a perfectly executed whip route, and the coverage is stuck behind that. Uh, that, that receiver behind him and he just bam it's, it's just gorgeous man like the, the offense is doing him justice it, it really shows when you focus on a play caller and you and you actually get um some designs for your best weapons it really helps and <laughs> i actually love look at the bottom of the screen here this guy looks like he's catching the pass number 20 <laughs> that ball is nowhere near him well he's just selling it tricking his little yeah, cornerback that's guarding him but yeah, this this might be my favorite play that we've seen, dude. I, I just love the route running here. I think that's really impressive display. All right, so here obviously you see again he's playing in line, but he's standing up here, and you're gonna see him just make a, an unbelievable catch in traffic, right? And again, red zone, you're seeing Kyle Pitts in the red zone over and over and over again. And this is what we want to sell to you because the Giants didn't have a real red zone threat. It took Jason Garrett 16 weeks to figure out Sterling Shepard is their best guy in the red zone. And for the most part, I think this is just um, exactly what you want to see from Kyle Pitts. Once you get to the red zone, he's your number one target. Scheme him open, and he can make plays like this. Throw him up the ball, and he, you know, just athletically gifted. He high points it. Exactly what you want from your tight end, who's basically a wide receiver. Uh, it's just it's just gorgeous over and over again. He holds onto the ball after getting hit down low. It, this is exactly what you want to see, and, you know, it, it's it's a big reason why a lot of people love Kyle Pitts and think he deserves to be the Giants selection at number eleven. And honestly, like after looking through all this film so far, I you can justify it. You know, you can justify it. If Devonta Smith is on the board, I'm probably taking him or Jamar Chase. If it's between Jalen Waddle and Kyle Pitts, it's really hard to figure out who you're going to take because Jalen Waddle's the speed guy. He's really really fast, and he can play outside. He can play inside. He can do so many things. Kyle Pitts is a tight end, and, and since Evan Ingram is going to be likely gone um, if he keeps messing up all the time, he's going to be gone after his fifth-year options up in 2021. So Kyle Pitts could be the future there, and you know it's really nice to have a playmaker who's even better than Evan Ingram replacing you know that position. Uh, so I could totally see them going that route. I mean, this is just incredible. Another awesome red zone play. Another angle here. Just throws it up, and see Kyle Trask, just, he trusts him. You know, he trusts that – He's going to come down with this ball. He's throwing it up in the air, basically. And there's there's another another defensive back coming in to help. Um, but he just knows his guy's bigger. His guy's taller. His guy's going to high points it. He's going to make the catch. He doesn't drop passes. And that's that's what you're getting. And you see this. The quarterback has his arm up, you know, right about here. You can see his, his guys. But Kyle Pitts already has the ball in his hands. And he's holding that thing for dear life. That thing is not getting out. So you can see just how great and strong he is at the point of attack. Again, in line, we're going to watch some blocking plays here. Um, I just wanted to throw in a couple so that you can see, you know, that he's not the best blocker. He's not the most refined blocker by any means. Uh, but I do think it's important for you guys to see this. Um, a lot of people say he's a willing blocker. I hate that term because willing does not indicate you're good or bad. It just indicates you are, you want to block or you're willing to block. And as a tight end, it is literally your job. So let's not use that phrase anymore. You'll see here, he does a decent job. He doesn't really have a base here, which I, which I prefer if he was squared up on him. I prefer if he was squared up on him. Instead, he turns his whole body. This is really easy right here. Uh, you can see the defenders basically staring down the, the running back, and he could easily shed this block and get off Kyle Pitts. And, you know, he does. Uh, luckily, the, the running back realizes he scoots outside. There's another defender waiting for him, and Kyle Pitts just pushes him inside. But I really like for him to square up and kind of and kind of just block his vision. You know, because a lot of these defenders, they they're just watching the ball carrier, and the second they spot it, that's when they make their move and try to and try to stop him. So basically, that defender knew he had help outside. He dives inward and he leaves that that defender to basically make the play. I, I would prefer if Kyle Pitts squared up and really just took that vision aspect. Again, in line. 
you can see the ball doesn't really go here, but it's not he the running back has the, has the choice to hit this lane. You can see 56 is going right there. He has a hole to hit. Um, but you can see there's there's a defensive back on the back side, could be a safety. Uh, basically trying to pick, you know, which which hole is he gonna pop through. So the running back just actually does a decent job selling that hole right there, making the defender bite, and then bounces it outside for um, you know, a nice little gain there. But Kyle Pitts, uh, that's the guy we really want to focus on. Doesn't really do much. He gets to the second level, but it's pretty lazadaisical. He kind of he kind of gets to that guy, that defender. Um, does a decent job, you know, seals that off. So the running back picks up a couple yards. I wouldn't say that's a terrible job by Kyle Pitts, but I would say um, it could be better. This is a better one by Kyle Pitts. He attacks that outside shoulder. You can see he has the strength to get it done. You know, this is this is a pass rusher standing up. He, he attacks that outside shoulder because he knows that this this ball, um, you know, this is just a QB option. So he basically just shoulders him off and pushes him behind. I don't mind this at all. I, what I do worry about is if he gets his hands too high, he might get a penalty. I prefer if he got his hands a little bit lower and catch the inside. He slaps that outside shoulder and pushes him to the inside. I think that defender really beats him. Um, I, don't, I don't actually consider this a win for Kyle Pitts by any means because he really, like, right here, he lost this rep. Right there, he lost the rep. He, he tries to square up, and, you know, Kyle Trask gets away from it. But the, the defender wins. You know, Kyle Pitts is on his back right now, so you can already make the assumption that he lost this rep based on the fact that he is completely turned around and the, and the defender is in front of him. Um, so you know, another not-so-great rep for him there. These are the concerns that will show up at the next level. If he's, if he's asked to block, uh, you know, pass rushers or blitzing safeties, blitzing linebackers, he's going to have some trouble. That's, that is my biggest con about him is easily his blocking. This is easily my favorite actual blocking play from Kyle Pitts. He does a really nice job sealing the edge right here. You can see the defender. He's, he's peeking into the backfield. He's trying to see what's going on. Um, this is just outside zone. So you see the running back is going to try to hit that hole on the outside. He does a good job winning and pushing that defender to the inside to open up that gap. Uh, this is, this is again, you know, Kyle Pitts is not the best blocker, but he obviously has potential. You know, that is the main thing here. You can work with athleticism. You can work with potential. And if you, if you can see plays like this, if you can find plays like this on film, especially against Georgia, a pretty solid school, um, you know, if you can find these type of plays on the film, you can you can translate it over to the NFL and say, you know, okay, he is capable of getting this done. Uh, maybe there's a lot of room to improve. There's a lot of negatives that you can spot, but at the same time, he does manage to get it done on occasion, and that's what you're really looking at. That's what makes him so, uh, you know, elevated in draft boards that the potential is there to improve. Another nice blocking play. He, you know, he seals the edge there. He gets inside too. That's the one thing. This is what I would have liked to see him do before. He gets those hands inside on the breastplate um, and really just squares off that defender. This is this is exactly what I was talking about before. What he didn't do, he attacked that outside shoulder and really got beat on the inside. Um, he gets his hand inside. He wins this rep immediately. You know, it's it, that. That's kind of what you want to see. Um, and his outside hand's actually pushing him on the outside shoulder. He has his inside hand locked inside on the, on the chest plate. And he's just trying to square off that and open that lane and not let him get that inside leverage. So it's really nice here. You know, he's pushing him. He, he actually is using those legs, churning, pushing him backward. So a nice little play. And then the running back has a nice little, nice little uh, hole to get through. But for the most part, you know, I do really think Kyle Pitts is a very, very talented prospect. I don't, I wouldn't categorize him as generational, but I will say I believe that he's capable of being generational, just not yet. The blocking is a major problem for me. Um, I, I think he's maybe a little bit below average of a blocker, maybe average at best. Uh, so there is there is room for improvement. If he was a generational tight end, he'd be you know capable of catching passes like he just did right there and running routes like a receiver, but also being able to block adequately. So that's something that we need to see more of um, in the future with Kyle Pitts. I think, you know, he has the athleticism. He has all the raw intangible traits to just be a phenomenal player at the NFL level. And he obviously is such an offensive weapon, especially in man coverage. I think he fits um, Jason Garrett's offensive scheme to perfection. Um, just the 50-50 balls, the big frame. You know, he can, he can drop back into zone. He can drop and fit into those zone coverages and just collect passes. And he has a big enough body 
to, you know, box out cornerback safeties and linebackers. He's about three inches taller than Evan Ingram, about 15 pounds heavier. Um, and I do think there's actually a little bit of room for, for weight on his frame too. So that could be another thing, you know, to improve his blocking, putting on a little bit more weight could be a benefit for him. So, you know, we'll see what the Giants do if they take him. We'll see how he progresses in the NFL, but I do think he's a, he's an absolute weapon and your offense is going to get better with a player like that on your roster. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this prospect breakdown of Kyle Pitts. Um, you know, crack some jokes along the way, have some fun. And if you guys have any other ideas or, or people that you want us to break down, obviously we are taking all the feedback. We want to break down Julian Love in his past couple of games uh, with the Giants at cornerback and see if he's capable of being that CB2 for the future. I'm going to make some Jabril Peppers and Leonard Williams highlight videos in the coming days. Um, and Asante Samuel Jr., a guy who the Giants might be able to land in the second, late second, early third round, possibly. I think, you know, he could be a fantastic player for the Giants, you know, filling that CB2 spot, you know, injecting some co competition there. Um, so we'll see what happens. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for the support. And we will catch you guys on the next one.